Amen. Amen. All right. So, um, so we're continuing this series, or this morning is the last message of this series. Pastor T.W. told me he has a great series. going to be starting next week, so make sure you invite a friend next week. So, um, this, and it was entitled this week as the series has been God is Calling You Out, or He is Calling You Out, and what an incredible time it's been. And, uh, and so, this morning, I want to talk about something specific that uh, is involved in our lives in it. And it really started with the idea of this little mechanism here that I got for Christmas. It was, it's kind of heavy, you know, and so it was in a box, a little square box, and I wasn't sure what it was. In fact, I don't know if you're like me or not, but I like to try to guess what my gifts are before I get to open them. It drives Bethany crazy because usually I'm right on, right? Usually I'm like, man, I know what this is, you know, or I know what this is. This is this, and, and I, I can guess. She's like, man, you, are, you, you drive me crazy. Why do you always do that? You, really, you take all the fun out of it. I go, well, I don't know. It's just, uh, I, don't, I don't know. So, but this present right here, I had, it was in a little, little square box. I had no idea what it was because it's kind of heavy. And I was excited. You know, I was, I was pumped. What is this gift? So I began to open it up. And, and I opened it up and I pulled it out. And I'm like, what, Bethany, what is this? What'd you get me? You know, and she goes, well, it's, it's for your car. I said, for my car? Yeah, it's for your truck. You keep it in your truck. I go, what do you do with it? She goes, there's a lot of different things you can do with it. With And I was like, really? She says, yeah. She says, well, because there's a flashlight. You know, I, I forgot to put batteries in it. I need to put batteries. Gosh. So that had been really nice. Right? So there's a flashlight right here, and there's a little magnet right here. So, so I guess if you're stranded on the side of the road, right, uh, you could put it on your car like this or maybe on the side of your car, and there's a magnet, and, and there's a little flashing light right here that would have been really nice to be able to show you. And so it would blink. I, I'm assuming it blinks. Uh, I'm just assuming that that's what it would do. It would blink. And... Uh, and so uh, to let other drivers know that, hey, I'm stuck on the side of the road, right? So that's nice. And, uh, and so, in fact, as I was looking at this this week um, in detail, I didn't realize this, but there's a whistle on here too well as well. You can blow it, you know, and there's, so there's a whistle. I'm not sure exactly when you'll need a whistle. Um, I've been thinking about it. I don't know when I need a whistle. Um, uh, Maybe someone's driving by and they're going really fast. I'm like, <laughs> you know, I don't know. I'm not sure exactly, but there's a whistle. So, um, um, and then, and then there's also, uh, there's also here, I know you can't see it very well, but there's a, uh, there's a little blade in here. And I said, well, what's this for? She goes, well, it's, it's to cut your seatbelt with. I said, to cut my seatbelt with. She goes, yeah. I said, well, when do I need? She says, you know, you know, when you're, you drive over a cliff in the water and your car is sinking. <laughs> and it's filling up with water. <laughs> and your seatbelt is stuck, <laughs> right? And you don't know what to do and you can't get it stuck. But I got this tool here and I can, I can find it. And I, and I cut my seatbelt out. Uh, but then I'm stuck in the car and I can't get out because the window won't open. And so that's why there's this little mechanism right here. I know you can't see it, but there's a pointed thing right here. And you take it and you just, I, I'm assuming this is what you do. I haven't tried it out yet. Maybe I can try it on your vehicle. But you, I guess you just hit it really, hit the window really hard and it smashes the window. You know, psh. Awesome. Then I can swim out. <sighs> I'm saved. I got the tool. Bethany bought me the tool, you know. And I uh, said, <laughs> I go, Bethany, I said, why, why did you buy this for me? She goes, because it brings me, it brings me great comfort to know that if you're ever drowning in your car and you can't get your seatbelt out, you can get out and get out through the window. It gives me great comfort. So, so she bought this for me and she has one in her car and she has one in Evan's car. And so there's one in all of our cars. So, uh, so I'm hoping um, that I put this someplace that I can find it. Okay. Um, <laughs> 
I'm hoping that I don't put it in my glove box or, or down in my, my seat thing, you know, where all my other junk is, that little flip-flop thing that we just, you know, it's down there somewhere because I'm hoping that someday, uh, maybe in the next 10 years, uh, if I find myself in that position, that I'll have enough memory to know that 10 years ago, Bethany bought me this. And it's somewhere in my car. If I can only find it fast enough, <laughs> I'll be saved. And so, so that brings us to our message tonight, this morning. And, uh, and it's this little disease that, that's in our life. Unfortunately, sometimes it's comfort. If you're like me and you recognize that in our Western world, mainly, uh, namely America, we have this di- little dis- dirty little wor- word that uh, many of us are acquainted with, and it's, called, and it's called comfort. And don't get me wrong, a comfort- comfortable couch, a, a, you know, a nice pair of shoes, you know, um, all these things, a, a nice comfortable bed. I mean, we seek uh, pillow after pillow after pillow to finally find that one pillow that when we wake up, we don't have a neck ache right? Anybody else with me? You know, and, and, and so we, just so that we can wake up knowing that we had a good night's sleep and that we've been comfortable through the night. I'm not saying these things or these other luxuries that we have here on this earth are not necessarily a bad thing, but it's when these things, it's when this idea becomes part of our life, and not necessarily part of our life, but more importantly, part of our spiritual life too as well. And then when it becomes part of our spiritual life, I believe that we find ourselves in a danger zone. And unfortunately, we've seen through the years, we've seen this little disease enter the church as well. And although we don't necessarily use the term anymore, secret friendly anymore, but, we've, uh, uh, but the desire is still the same. We build carports so that when we come to church, we have a place to park and get out. Our loved ones can get out so they won't get wet. We, we uh, uh, on rainy days, the decor, the colors that we even pick out are designed mainly so that when you will walk into a place, into a building, you'll feel loved, you'll feel warm, you'll feel happy inside. It's because of our comfort, our desire. And, and, and many times when this becomes part of our life and it becomes our main focus in life, we oftentimes begin to ask these questions like this, questions like, is the music too loud or is it not loud enough? Is it, uh, uh, or we begin to ask questions, is it too dark in here or is, it too, or, or, or is it too much light in here? Is it too cold or is it too warm? And then we begin to find ourselves that every question that we, that we ask, every concern that we have, it's based on one thing and one thing only. And it's based on our comfort. It all starts with the same thing. And if we're not careful, hear me, church, if we're not careful, we'll become a consumer-driven church where it's more about you and more about people that are coming in. Don't get me wrong. I, I love people come in and feel like they're welcome, feel like they're loved, feel like they're accepted. But if this becomes our main priority as a person where it becomes more about me the consumer, rather than becoming a spirit-driven body. I'm not saying these things are necessarily wrong. There's nothing wrong with having the right colors on the, wrong, on the walls. There's nothing wrong with having the right decor that matches our current culture and what seems to be in style in that time, in that age. I don't think there's nothing wrong. I enjoy it. I love it. I, man, it makes me feel good inside. I understand. There's nothing wrong with wanting a desire to have new carpet. How many know we need new carpet in this place? There's nothing wrong with that. But when it becomes our focal point, when it becomes our battle cry, when it becomes our, our, our only desire in our walk with the Lord, something is totally off. Something is wrong. I want to be a God-driven church. I want to be a God-driven person. I enjoy the technology of this age. 
I love the fact that we have sound and the sound sounds great. I love the fact that we have projectors and they're able to project on the wall. I love all these things and we hope that someday we'll have LED screens. Wouldn't that be awesome? But let it never take the place of the gospel. Let it never take the place of the Spirit of God moving in this place. Let it never take the place where we have to say this, I have to have this for God's Spirit to move. This has to take place for, um, for Him to, to move in the lives of the people that are present. Let it never come to that point. Unfortunately, we allow the luxuries of America and the modern, modern conveniences dictate what's best in our lives. The issue is not conveniences or a comfort, comfort but it's, it's what captures our heart, what captures your heart here this morning. When this occurs, it keeps God from moving in our lives. It keeps Him from having His way in us because our heart is captured in a different direction, in a different desire, rather than our heart is captured with the, with the desires of God and where He is moving me and where He is directing me and what His will is and what He wants. When our hearts fall into the idols of conveniences and our comforts that are are present in our life, the call of Jesus to follow him, when the call of Jesus to follow him, when we begin to pick up the cross finally, when we begin to pick up him, when those comforts become present in our lives, and they are present when we desire to follow Jesus in that comfort of picking up the cross, the cross becomes foreign in our life. It come, becomes weird. It becomes odd. So the moment God is sounding the call, and he's pushing us to move outside of our comfort zone. He's pushing us to move outside even of our own desires, even our own wants. And I'm challenging us this morning because he's moving us out. Are you the one that's pressing the snooze alarm? Are you the one that says, ah, oh, just may, may, maybe next week, uh, maybe a little bit later, maybe next time I press that snooze alarm. Don't allow your comforts to keep you from what God has for you. As a believer, you know, the Egyptian, the, the Israelites, when uh, they went into Egypt, all 70 members of Jacob's family, they were saved, basically. They, they went into Egypt and they made their home, they made their place. In fact, God prospered them in, in a great way. They acquired uh, a lot of land, much land. Uh, their, their, the food was plenty. The livestock, they acquired much livestock from the Egyptians as they came and, and they gave their livestock for food and land in the same way. They made their home. In a way, maybe they became comfortable in, in the place. In Egypt, they become satisfied with where they're at. Egypt is a great place. It's a great place to be, but when it takes hold of you, if you're not careful, it will become your slave, just like the Israelites. So everything was fine until the Pharaoh, until a new Pharaoh stepped in and fear became a part of the Pharaoh's life. And he said, looked upon the, the Israelites and he saw their great wealth and he saw their numbers and he saw what they had. Instead, what happened is he put them into, into slavery. If you're not careful, if you're not careful, the very thing that you find comfortable in your life, you'll have such a grip on it in your life. Instead of it beginning to serving you, now you begin to serve it. And it becomes your save. What do you do when God calls you out of your comfort zone? It's not fun, huh? It's not fun when God is moving you out into something different. He's moving you out into a different realm. He's maybe moving you out into a different ministry. He's moving you out. He's calling you into something maybe that is unfamiliar at the time. What do you do? What do you do when you're in front of Jesus and you're in front of him and you're asking him, how can I be saved? What must I be saved? Remember the story of the, 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 the rich man? I'm sure his heart was sincere. He was sincere in asking Jesus, how can I be saved? 
How can I be saved? And Jesus said, you must keep all the, the, the laws. He says, well, I've done this from the very beginning. I've done this from when I, at an early age. Meaning that, uh, you know, I, 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 I've done all that is required of me. What else is, is required of me? And Jesus pointed out the one thing that maybe brought comfort in his life. The one thing that brought uh, security in his life. The one thing that maybe even brought a purpose in his life. That one thing, and he said this, he said, he said, well, then go sell all your possessions and then come, what, follow me. And what, what ended up happening, you know the story, is the, the rich man, he left Jesus, probably his head down, hanging low. And the Bible says he went away because he had great wealth. He was holding on to something. He was only holding on to the wealth that he had because that became his idol in his life. I'm not saying there's nothing. I'm not saying that having uh, riches in your life is a bad thing. There's nothing wrong with, with having wealth and, 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 and being uh, prosperous in that way. There's nothing wrong with those things. But I am saying is this, is that when those things become a priority in your life, when they become a God in your life, when they become a part of your life where you say, I can't give that up. I can't go do that. That means I, that means I, I leave this behind. I can't do that to follow you, Jesus. And Jesus says, hey, I want to be the Lord of your life. I don't want these things to be the Lord of your life anymore, but I want to be the Lord of your life. That means that whatever, that means my heart's desire is God, whatever you want, then that's what I want. If you want to move me in the place of, of need, well, then that's where I want to be. If you want to move me to a place of plenty, amen, I want, that's where I want to be. We like the plenty part, right? Uh, move me to a place of plenty. But, but the need, I don't know if I like the need part, but, but, but God, amen, if that's where you have me. That means that I'm learning to be content in all things, right? How many know there's a difference of being content and comfortable? Of comfortable. There's a difference of being content and the difference of being comfortable. See, comfortable is saying this, is saying, hey, God, I, I know where you, where you want me to be. I know where you want me to go. But you know what? Man, I sure am comfortable right here. I sure am, I sure, sure am very familiar with, this, with, with where I'm at right now. And you know what? I think I'm just going to stay in this spot right now. That's comfortable. Contentment, it says, Lord, uh, man, if you move me, because remember, P Paul said this. This is because uh, Paul said, I've learned to be what? Content in what? All things. So, so Paul, this is biblical. So Paul says this. He says, you know what? Even if, if I'm over here where I'm in need, where I'm, uh, I'm going to be content over here. Over, even if I'm over here in plenty, I'm going to learn be, to be content in here. Basically, Paul is saying this one thing. Lord, wherever you lead me. God, wherever you, whatever you have for me, God, whatever your plan is for me in my life and the direction that you have for me, I will find myself in contentment in knowing that I'm, that I'm in the center of your will. And that's the only thing that matters. That's the only thing that matters to me is that I want to be in the center of your will. And wherever that will is, whatever it looks like, whatever the situation is, whatever the circumstances is, if it's hardship, then I'm going to be content. If it's blessing, then I'm going to be content. If, if I'm in a good spot, man, I'm going to be content. But if I find myself in a spot of growing, of being stretched, then I'm going to be content in that spot. Whatever you have for me, I'm going to be content. I'm not going to be comfortable. I don't want to be comfortable. I don't I don't want to be in a state where I'm comfortable and I don't want to be moved. My hands or my, my feet are like in bricks. And, and, and Lord, you want me to make that step? God, you want me to take that, that leap of faith? Man, I just can't do it. I just can't do it. I just like where I'm at right now. I don't want to be in that spot. I don't want to be in that spot of, uh, of comfort. I want to be in a spot of contentment. And we saw that in the rich man. So what do you do when God calls you out of your comfort zone? What do you do? First thing is this, is that let obedience be the key. Let obedience be the key. Don't let your lack of seeing the future keep you from moving into the plan, into, into what God has for you. 
Don't let your lack, and you know, we've talked about this in like upstairs and youth and, and teenagers have a hard time with this because especially junior hires, they only see the present, right? They only see what, what's happening like, like right now. You know, they can't imagine what happens next week, right? And, and, and but, but yet we as adults, we've, we've lived a little, bit, a little bit longer. We're able to see the future. We're able to, you know, see, well, okay, if I choose this, that means this is going to happen. If I choose this, that means, you know, if I move this direction, then that's going to happen. Don't but many times, when we choose the plan that God has for us, many times, by stepping out, we may not see exactly what's going to take place. We may not see the exact income that's, that, uh, that's going to take place stepping out. It's about obedience. Are you willing to put your trust and obedience in the Lord this morning? Can you put your trust in Him that even though I may not be able to see the future, even though I may not even, even see the outcome, it's scary to be able to witness to my, my coworkers. It's scary to have that type of faith where I need to give this cent money, but I don't know what the outcome's going to be. I don't know if I'm going to be able to... to, to uh, 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 to be able to save for something else. Uh, you know, I'm preparing for my future. I'm preparing for, for my retirement. So if I do this, Lord, then I don't know what my retirement's going to look like. So, so we, we, we begin to choose something else. It's hard when God is calling us to step out and in that matter of faith to actually see what he has in store. Many times he doesn't reveal that to us. So we just have to be what? Obedient. And we have to put our trust in him. You remember the story, there's a, this man, he was, he was walking on the side of this, this cliff, and he's walking on the side, he got a little too close, so he got a little too close, and he fell over the cliff, and as he's falling down, he reached out and grabbed onto a branch, and he's hanging there for dear life, hanging on this branch, hanging to this branch, and he's, as he's hanging on this branch, he looks down, and he sees and he sees the ground, and it's, and, it's, and it's so far down, and he knows that if he lets, lets go of this branch, that he surely will die. There's no hope. So in a moment of, of, of anguish, he's holding on. He begins to scream out like many of us would do, and he begins to scream out, Help, help! Is there anyone up there? Help, help! I'm down here. I need help. And out of nowhere, he hears this voice, I'm here. He says, great, help me, I'm down here. Help me, I'm down here. He says, I, I'm here. Now you have to listen to me. I am the Lord. He says, oh, God, thank you for being there. He says, yes. He says, oh, God, I'm so glad you're up there. He says, help me. He says, I'm going to help you, but you have to do exactly what I tell you to do. And he said, oh, Lord, you know I'll do exactly what you tell me to do. I know you'll, you'll I'll, I'll fall, tell me whatever you want, and I'll do exactly what you want me to do. And he says, okay, listen, listen very carefully. He says, okay, Lord, I'm listening. And he says, let go of the branch. Let go of the branch. And there was a long pause for a moment, and the man said, Help, help, is there anyone else up there? <laughs> right? Many times we do this. Many times we do this. Lord, Lord, I'll be obedient. Lord, I mean, how many know it's easy to say yes to God when you're sitting in a chair? It's easy to say, hey, I'm going to follow your will. I'm going to follow your direction. Man, I'm going to get outside my comfort zone. And, man, I'm going to be, uh, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be uh, reckless for Jesus, right? Man, uh, uh, man, I love that time of worship. Man, I'm filled up. I'm ready to live for him. Yeah, I'm ready to do something incredible for him. All of a sudden, the Lord speaks to you and says, man, I want you to step out in this way. Man, I want you to do this. Man, I want you to witness in that way. Man, I want you to uh, bless that person. I want you to move in that ministry. I want you to uh, do something that you've never done before. And all of a sudden, our response is, oh, I don't know if I could do that. I'm not sure if I have enough faith for that. I'm not sure if I'll have enough words to be able to say in, in, in that moment. I don't know if I can step out. We have to learn, learn to say yes to our feet. Amen? We got to learn to be able yes to our feet. We need to learn to be doers, more doers, rather than just hearing the Word of God. We got the hearing down right, but it's the doing. It's the doing we need to have more than just a knowledge 
of Jesus Christ. We talked about this in Sunday school, right? We have a knowledge of Jesus Christ, but we're missing the believing in Him, believing in the power of His work, believing in what He can do in and through our lives. Oh, I have the knowledge down. I have a knowledge of knowing who He is. I got the knowledge down, good, but actually believing it, where it begins to affect my body, it begins to affect every part of me, and that my actions and the things that I do. How many of you know that, that, that uh, uh, having faith and moving out in faith is a lot different than just simply knowledge of it, right? So the second thing is this. There are no comfort zones in the body of Christ. Can I step on some toes here this morning if I haven't already? There are no comfort zones in the body of Christ. Now, I don't know if you're a visitor here this morning. It's great to have you. I hope you come back. Pastor TW does a way better job speaking than I do. So make sure you come back next, next Sunday. And so, but let me tell you something, church. We need to know that there is no comfort zone in the body of Christ. C.S. Lewis once said this, I didn't go to religion to make me happy. I knew a bottle of port would do that. If you want religion to make you feel comfortable, I, cer I certainly don't recommend Christianity. God's never called us, called us to simply do church. He called us to what? To be the church. He called us to be the church. He didn't simply call us just to come in every Sunday morning and say, you know what, I'm just going to do church. That's what I'm doing. I'm doing church. No, he's called us as believers to be the church. This is a lot different than simply doing something to actually being something. See, when I'm doing something, at any moment I can change what I'm doing. If I'm doing something, I'm moving in a direction, I'm doing this, at any moment I can switch direction and I can go this direction. At any moment I can make a U-turn and go in the opposite direction. When I'm doing something, I have a lot of freedom. I say, man, I can, uh, I'm fine with doing because I know that one minute I could be doing this and the next minute I could be doing this. There's a lot big difference of actually doing church and actually being the church because when you are the church, when we begin to be the church, that's who you are. You can't change who you are. When you are the child of God, you can't change that. I, I am the church, and wherever I go, that's who I am. That means that wherever I go, man, I'm going to preach the gospel. Wherever I go, I'm going to portray who Jesus is. I'm going to portray the character of Christ in all that I do, in all that I say. Why? Because that's who I am. That's who I am. You can't change that. I can't just stop doing that because it's who I am. This table cannot stop being a table. It's what it is. It's what it's designed to do, to be this table here. You're designed. You're called to be the church, to be the hands and feet of Jesus Christ, to be the spokesperson of the Lord, that when you speak, people hear Jesus in your words. There's no comfort zones in the body of Christ. Many times we just simply want to come and say, man, can I just do my, do my time? Man, I just want to come. Can I just come and sit? Can I just come and enjoy? I just want to come and then go eat some lunch and then go home. I'm on my nice comfy couch, right, and watch a little bit of golf. Hey, man, for golf. And, and some uh, football. Football's over. Uh, you know, and some NASCAR. NASCAR. No one likes NASCAR in here. Um, right? Can I just do that? No, God's called us to a lot more than just that. Is there anything wrong with those things? No. But I want you to understand that you're called more than just doing, that you're called being. Being. Third thing is this. We're almost done. It's never about, it's never about you. When you stay in your comfort zone, you want your desires met, right? When I'm in my comfort zone, it's, it becomes all about me and what I desire and what I want, right? Pastor T.W., he mentioned this in his, in his prayer, is that, uh, you know, when, when has worship become, part, become about me? 
When has worship become what I desire, what I want? Uh, when has worship become part of, when, when has worship, when we're in a time of worship, when has it become, uh, when has uh, a song that we sing affect how we worship the Lord? When does that happen? When, it, when, when has a time, when, why has a time in our life where we say, you know, I can't sing that song because it really doesn't get me in the presence of God? Man, I can't worship in that type of way because it really it affects me and, and I really can't. I mean, I, man, man, the lighting is just too bright and it really affects my worship and, and how I worship the Lord. Man, that guitar is way too loud. Man, I just can't worship that way. Man, I, man, the person next to me, they sing awful. That's why I moved over there to that side, and that person sings all. I just need to sit somebody who can sing really good because it helps me, helps me stay on tune. <laughs> Does that ever happen? I know at times, man, at times I'm in worship, and I'm thinking, man, I sound pretty good right now. Woo! Man, I sound good. And I know I don't because I'm in the car singing, and I'm like, man, I sound terrible. <laughs> right? But when has it become about me? When has it become, man, it's about me, man, I don't know if I, man, they, man, if they just had a little bit cooler in here, then, man, I would be able to worship a little bit better. They sing some songs that I knew, man, I could just really just get into worship. When has worship became about us? Pastor T. you he said, it's never been about us, church. It's always been about us giving to God. It's about us saying, hey, I'm going to worship you, Lord. I'm going to give you praise. I'm going to give you glory. I'm going to, I, even if I have to stand on cruddy carpet, it's not going to affect my worship. Even if I have to stand on a dirty soil in Africa, it's not going to affect my worship because it's not about me. I'm not going to let a song affect my worship. I'm not going to let a lighting affect my worship. I'm going to let somebody affect my worship. Why? Because it's not about me. It's about me giving back to God. It's about me worshiping God and Him Almighty because He is worthy of our worship. Stop allowing worship to become about me. About me. When we come in this place, we have our hands lifted high, not so that somebody can notice us, not so somebody can recognize, oh, man, you're so spiritual. Why? Because, man, God, I have so much to be grateful for. I have so much to be thankful for. Man, I used to be in a pit. Man, I used to be a, I used to be a terrible sinner. Oh, my goodness, my mouth used to have been terrible, off the charts. But look at me now, Lord, because of you flowing in my life, because you're changing, because of your grace in me me making me into a new person I give you glory I give you praise this morning it's not about me it's not about me don't make worship about you don't make worship about you it's about giving him worship giving him glory he is worthy of all your worship it's not about you it's never about you See, when we're comfortable, when we're comfortable, it just becomes, well, it's, it's my little bubble. It's my, my little zone. I want to move outside of my zone. I want to move outside what's comfortable to me and move into what God has in store and directed in my life. And last thing is this. Growth happens when we're uncomfortable, Right? Growth happens when we're uncomfortable. You ever notice that? When there's a stretching in your life, when God begins to move you, has that ever happened to you? When God begins to move you into something unknown where you're not sure about, all of a sudden there's a little bit of stretching that takes place in your life, you know? It's not very comfortable, huh? I mean, we want to be comfortable, but how many know, man, we are, we're going to be a church, we're going to be a people that's going to move outside of our comfort zone, and we're going to be moving into the plan and the direction that God has for me. When I was first starting out in ministry, I'm talking, I'm trying to finish. When I first started out in ministry, man, let me tell you, speaking was very uncomfortable for me. In fact, it still is, and I'm grateful that it still is. And you've heard me say this, I hope that it never changes. 
I hope it never changes. I remember when God first called me in the ministry. Man, I didn't speak very well. I still don't speak very well. I stumble on my words. I used to stutter really bad. I still stutter a little bit. But, man, it was not, you know, I hadn't, didn't have a whole lot of knowledge. And I still don't have a lot of knowledge. still don't have a lot of wisdom. And God called me out into ministry, called me out to speak in, in, with youth. And, I, and every single moment, I said no. If someone would ask me, I would say no. Yeah, can you speak? No. No, I don't want to. Man, I let someone else do it. And I would always think that it's part of humility. I just want to be humble. I just want to be humble. Let someone else do it. Until God called me and said, you know what? I made a decision that no longer will fear keep me from in the plan and the direction that God has for me. So every time in that point, I begin to step forward. Every time, every time I was asked, my first answer was not no, but it was yes. Yes, I would. Yes, I would. Many of us, we become like this, this rubber band in a way. This rubber band is very comfortable, but let me tell you something. At church, church people, we, if we are like this rubber band, we are not meant to stay like this. This rubber band has an objective. And the reason why this rubber band was, was made so that it can be stretched. It has a potential. This rubber band has a potential just like you have a potential. And many times as that potential is being seen, that stretching begins to happen. Many times, it just, just a little bit of stretch. It doesn't have to be a lot of stretch, but a little bit of stretching. Many times we're like, oh, I don't like that. I don't like that stretching. Oh, that, 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 that this gets me way uncomfortable. I don't know if I like that. I don't know if I like it. But how many know that based on the stretching that is acquired will determine the distance that you go? I don't know if you guys know this or not, but I'm not very flexible. The other day I was doing some stretches. <laughs> the other day, actually a few weeks ago, Bethany was trying to get me to do some stretches. And so we're in our living room. And I'm literally, I'm just like, I got my feet out. And I'm, I'm, I'm not going to show you guys because it's, it's, it's ridiculous. And I'm sitting straight up. I got my back against the couch because I can't sit straight up because it's even sitting straight up causes me to stretch a little bit and it hurt. And I put my hand out, hands out like that. And I just, just put my hands out and just, I mean, just, just that little movement right there. It's like stretch, right? Stretch. I'm like, oh, oh, I don't, oh. It's that little stretching, right? Ah, I do, oh, Bethany said, come on, do something. Come on. Lean. I'm, I'm, doing, I'm doing something, Bethany. I'm, I am. I'm stretching. I'm stretching. Come on. <laughs> I was going to say something else. Uh, so I said, well, what about you? She said, well, okay. She gets down. Of course, she just goes, you know, I'm like, she touches her toes. I'm like, how'd you do that? She says, well, I used to be a cheerleader. And, uh, so, man, I, I could never do that. I could never do that. Stretching isn't fun, right? It's not fun. No one says, oh, oh, stretching's fun. Ooh, Wee, look at me, I'm stretching. Wee, this is fun. I love it when God moves me outside my comfort zone. Oh, but it's just a little. Oh, but oh, I love it. I can't wait for more, Lord. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I was hoping you would move me out. I was hoping you would challenge me in this direction. I was hoping somebody would ask me to serve in that ministry. Oh, I'm so grateful that for that. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Yeah, woo, this is great. Look at me. Right? When God says, oh, he, the Lord says, oh, wait, wait a minute. I have so much more in store for you. Right? Oh, I have so much more in store for you. Oh, you think that's it? Oh, no. I got so much more in store for you. He said, I don't know if I can handle much more, Lord, right? I mean, you would do that. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, no, this rubber band has a breaking point. I mean, eventually, 
If I pull it back far enough, it's going to break. And we begin to think that, God, I don't know if I can handle much more of this stretching. I don't know if I can do much more of this. This is just really getting me outside my comfort zone. And God said, don't worry. I have a plan. And if you trust in me, I'll stretch you to the, to the very point. It won't break you, but it will keep you. And if you're not, if you watch, watch. Because I'll stretch you, now I will launch you into something Awesome. Hey, bring that rubber band back in. Run that rubber band. All right? He says, if you let me stretch you, I'll launch you into something. Awesome. Something that you thought you'd never be into. A realm that you thought you'd never possess. A tent that you thought you'd never be able to acquire. A place that you thought you'd never be. And all of a sudden, because you allowed him to stretch you, you're standing there and saying, God, I don't know how I got here. I don't know how I even got to this point. But I thank God that he allowed stretching in my life. I thank God that allowed the purpose of him to stretch me and get me outside my comfort zone into an area. I thank God that he launched me into a new direction. I know you can't tell this. I know you can't see it. But this rubber band started out a different shape. It started out a different uh, a size. How I many you know that when the stretching took place, it returned to a different size? When you allow God to stretch you, man, this is so good. When you allow God to stretch you, when you when you come back, when that stretching ends, you're no longer the same person anymore. Amen? You're no longer the same person anymore. When's the last time you stepped out in faith that was uncomfortable? Francis Chan, he said this, God doesn't call us to be comfortable. He calls us to trust Him so completely that we are unafraid to put ourselves in situations where we will be in trouble if he doesn't come through. God put me in those situations that I, I, I have to completely trust in you. Life isn't about being comfortable. It's about listening to the voice of God and responding in faith. Right? Let's stand this morning. Life isn't about being comfortable. God hasn't called us to be comfortable. In fact, it's just the opposite. He's called us to live a life of faith and to completely trust and hold, have obedience, have obedient in Him, to be totally obedient to Him. I don't know in the church many times we've made following Jesus easy. We made it easy. But how many of you know that living for Jesus, following for him, it's not easy. It will probably be the most hardest thing you'll choose to do. But how many you know it'll be the best thing you'll choose to do? It'll be the best thing you choose to do.